Hey everyone, welcome back. So, I am in a no-buying month. It's Lent, I have spent too much money lately, so I thought giving myself some boundaries would be healthy. But then the new collections start rolling in and it's really hard to resist. So I think that maybe doing a video about it will make me feel better, kind of like a therapy session. I wanted to share with you the pieces that are in my cart ready to be bought from Massimo Dutti. The reason why I love Massimo Dutti is because they are such the perfect combination of great material, great design with doable prices. They are not fast fashion prices, but they're also not upscale prices. They do have this timeless kind of laid back but still ultra chic kind of aesthetic so very in tune with us girls on this channel but before we begin the video i was almost forgetting since there are many new people here fortunately welcome i would like to do another q a video but i need questions so if you are curious about something and you feel like asking ask away in the comments and I'll try and get back to you in the video. Beginning with this 100% cotton poplin shirt. The poplin shirts from Massimo Dutti are so good and you can never have too many shirts, can you? It's just such a basic, such a wearable, versatile piece that adds that sartorial feel to a look. The fit here is a bit oversized on the shoulders, but you'll see that for the sleeves and also for the length, it's not so big. I have talked about this before. I have this pet peeve with oversized shirts that are too long. So then when you tuck it into whatever you're wearing on the bottom, it turns into this bulky, sort of out of control, hard, to look seamless result. And it takes away from the elegance of the shirt, from the elegance of wearing a shirt. So it defeats the purpose. The color is stunning. I love it in this sort of green gray. It's neutral, it's dark, but it's not somber. It's also a very nice color to pair with other earth tones that you might have in your wardrobe for spring, summer. And it's a color that travels well also through autumn and winter. So it doesn't look too dated, too limited, but if you want something brighter, I also think that in the color stone, this shirt looks fantastic. It's that perfect kind of khaki green that is not too bright, but also not too muted. It's very safari chic, especially with the addition of the pocket over the left side. A must-have in your wardrobe. Second piece is this cropped trench coat. When we're transitioning into spring, I feel that trench coats become the go-to outerwear because you have spring showers and you don't want something that is too puffy or something that is too warm, but you still need a little bit of coverage. And if like me, you love a classic style, a trench coat is just an essential, a total must have. But being petite, having those trench coats that hit around your knees can make you look shorter, can give a weird proportion to your looks. So perhaps finding something that is shorter, that is cropped, will give you a more balanced silhouette. I love this. I already have a trench coat that is cropped, but it is very fitted. So what I love about this one is that it has more of a pea coat trappy shape. Again, beautiful quality details. You have the vent on the back. You have the epaulettes over the shoulders that is quintessentially trench coat. You have the straps around the cuffs. You have this beautiful raglan kind of cut to the sleeves. There's just so much to love about this trench coat. And another short trench coat that is in my card is this one. It's completely different, so I'm not being redundant here. I really love this beige because I think it makes it a little less trenchy. That classic kind of tan trench coat is a total must have, but this one makes things a little bit lighter, a little bit more contemporary. Has an almost Japanese minimalism to its design from the wraparound collar to the sort of curved opening on the front. You also have, again, that trapeze shape that here is a bit more boxy. The sleeves are also a little bit wider. Also love the contrasting buttons so you can really see the detailing and those finishing elements that give a piece life. I have talked in the past how I wanted to find the perfect kind of sartorial dressy bomber jacket and I 
feel like I have. Is this perfection or what? It's in suede and I have felt Massimo Dutti's suede in my hands and I have to say they are usually very buttery, very soft. So if you're looking for the luxurious quality to your suede, you will find it there. I really like that it has a slimmer, kind of not too baggy silhouette. That is one of the things that I find the hardest to style when it comes to bomber jackets because they can be so exaggerated, so big, kind of swallow you whole. So something that is a bit more sleek, looks a bit more put together, a little bit more feminine, but you still feel like you're participating into the trend. It still has that sporty concept you can see by the collar, you can see by the snap buttons, the fact that there's no ribbing, you know, that elastic ribbing around the sleeve and around the waist area really takes this into a more constructed sartorial level, which I find is way easier to style also if you want to pair this with a shirt, if you want to pair this with something that is a bit more put together. It looks like it belongs there. Then we come to what I think is my favorite piece from this no haul haul. The round toe sling bag shoes. These have everything that I have been looking for in a sling bag. I have actually been on the hunt for a pair of sling bags for a while now. I know there are a lot of dupes for the Chanel kind of contrast toe one. It has been very trendy, but none of them have really caught my eye until I saw this because you can see that the toe box is very similar to the Chanel. It has that almond shape. It has a bit of a taller coverage, so you're not getting too much toe cleavage, but it's different enough that I don't feel like an imposter. So it's not really a dupe for the Chanel, but it has the best features from it. If they did this with a contrast toe, I would have bought it. I would have found a way. But I also like the idea of having a black one because then you can pair it with everything. You can wear it in the evening, doesn't look too casual. The heel is very sensible and very refined. It's not a block heel, which I think is something that is very common on Chanel dupes. This one has a bit of a more elegant shape, in my opinion. I love the angles of it. I think it's so beautifully designed. It has coverage on your foot, so the shoe is not going to just go flying out of your feet. Walk just something that you throw on without thinking, but elevates your look immediately. And on the topic of accessories, this Napa leather mini bucket bag is so cute. I mean, if you haven't been able to tell by now, I'm in this sort of luxury safari mode for a reason. I'm not going on one at all, but that aesthetic is really speaking to me and this would be perfect for that. This is so gorgeous. I have other leather products from Massimo Dutti and I have to say that they are really high quality, but I just love a bucket bag and I love that this one kind of tapers when it closes. So you're not carrying around a literal bucket. It has some design to it. It's not bulky. It's not like you're just throwing something around. Also the beautiful kind of braided handle, the gold accents in the perfect shade of gold, this delicious color of chocolatey brown that is chic yet super neutral. You can pair this with anything. Fits the world into it. I do have other bucket bags and I know some people critique them because they find that it's just a black hole that you throw things in. I have a little pochette inside of mine where I keep my essentials, things that I need to grab frequently, and I do just fine. Next little piece I've also seen live in the store, and it is just the cutest thing. How precious is this vest? One of my favorite styling tricks, whenever you feel like your look is a little plain, is adding that third layer. And in the summertime or in the springtime, adding layers can be difficult because you're just adding bulk. So a waistcoat or a vest might be the perfect solution to that. It would be beautiful for pairing with a short sleeved shirt underneath. You could pair this with a little mock neck t-shirt or you can wear it like the models wearing here as a top. Love the thin stripes that are not the same width as the trims. So that detail of the contrast navy around the edges really makes it intentional. The gold buttons will give it that finishing touch, will add that luxe factor. Seems like the type of piece that you wouldn't get your wear out of, but you end up wearing it a lot. Heck, you could even transition this to autumn with a mock neck like 
cashmere sweater underneath, wear this under a down jacket for some added interest. It's a no brainer. Here we go again. I'm telling you, one day I'll just pack my bags, get on a plane to Namibia to look at some lions and some giraffes. It's just calling me. Wouldn't this be perfect for a night at a safari? Come on, the pleats on the skirt will add a contrast of movement to the more structured sort of shirt-like part of the top. And on the topic of pleats, I love that this is a box pleat, so not the obvious kind of fan-like pleat, but really constructed, really considerate, shows a bit more care into the way that the piece has been made, which makes it look more expensive than it actually is. It's made in viscose, so it's not going to be stiff or hard to wear and it's also easier to keep. You don't have to really iron it. Every time you wear it, you can just steam it. Unlike 99% of my wardrobe, this dress has a bit of a drop waist. Not too much, but it's not cinched in. So it would be a nice change. And perhaps to emphasize that design detail, I would throw on those sort of adjustable chain belts around the hips. So 1970s Lily Redzewill. It's also a really lovely modest silhouette, so if you want to cover up a little bit more during summer and you're looking for a light dress that will look dressed up but will still give you a bit of breathability, this might be a great contender. And final piece, of course, is jewelry, because what is a video of mine without jewelry? This open, rigid, plated bracelet is gorgeous. I would actually get two of these at the same time because it, then you can play around with it. Maybe you want to wear bows, maybe you want to transition it into winter and you want to wear it over sleeves. The woven texture adds interest, so it's not just that plaque of gold in the surface, it catches the light in different ways, looks a bit more designed, a bit more detailed. So beautiful also to wear during summer with your arms bare because it really gives attention to the piece. It's statement, but still just ultra, ultra chic. It's also made 100% of breads, so it's not actual jewelry, it's costume jewelry, but it's high quality, durable costume jewelry that you'll be able to wear for years to come. This is it, everyone. These are the pieces that, it, honestly, making this video, it made things worse. I thought it would make things better. <laughs> Let me know what you're planning on getting this spring summer to give a refresh to your wardrobe. Let's make a pact that we're going to be very smart about our new purchases. Hopefully you found this helpful, fun, entertaining, or inspirational, and we will see each other again next time. Bye-bye.